Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and you're tuned in to Madden 18 on EA Sports. Every wide receiver in the NFL wants to be a top target, and two players will be trying to be that today. It's the Packers going up against the Bears. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. First open way back in 1924, but renovated in 2002. There's a look inside Venerable Soldier Field in Chicago. This was the scene a moment ago as the Bears emerged from their tunnel. Ready for football are they, and ready for football are we as the Bears get set to match up with the Green Bay Packers. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. This fielded at the two. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. So here comes the Packers offense now onto the field. Leading him out, there's Brett Hundley, third-year quarterback out of UCLA. Began his NFL career sitting behind Aaron Rodgers for two seasons in Green Bay. But guess what? Aaron Rodgers did the exact same thing sitting behind Brett Favre. Maybe Brett Hundley had the same type of luck with his career as it turned out for Aaron Rodgers. Here's the rookie from UTEP, Aaron Jones. And he stopped immediately there. Now it looks like we'll get a timeout, and we will. We've got an injured Packer on the field. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. And he'll go down. The Bears get there for the sack. The game plan for any defense is finding ways to make a quarterback uncomfortable in the pocket. When you bring pressure from all angles, you never know who's going to get home. In this case, the left cornerback right in the face of him puts him down. This is the script they had in mind for their opening drive. This is third and long. Here we go. Five, five. Throwing Hundley. He's got his target. It's come. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. A pickup of 24 on the third down conversion. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Here we go. One, nine. 
Now the first carry for Ty Montgomery. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. And they give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. And the Buffet boys, the O-line, hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you got to feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. And they're six yards away from picking up the first here on second down. They'll keep pounding here with Montgomery. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. Call it a gain of a yard, and it's going to bring up third and five. The starting 11 defensively for the Bears. Prince of Mukamara was signed as a free agent from Jacksonville because of what Chicago has to deal with in their own division. When you think of the NFC North, you think of Green Bay and Detroit and their ability to throw the ball all over the field with big, fast, shifty receivers, and you can never have enough guys to try and cover them. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. They'll look to throw. He's got Adams on the hookup. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive. And they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down. They did. Big time pickup for them. And now I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone because the closer you get to the end zone, the field can, gets condensed. It makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. You still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance count. He'll drop to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. Devontae Adams, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Well, too much oomph. Too much mustard there on that pass. They yeah, really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that. Went sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. Ten yards still left on second down. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Encroachment defense. And a movement there coming from the middle of the line. And you understand he wants to get off the ball quickly, but the ball's right in front of him. He has to watch it move first. After the penalty, it's Jones. And some room to maneuver. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only they're controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. And they'll keep on the ground with Jones. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Well, a well-executed blitz, no doubt. Great job by the linebacker. Maybe the quarterback, if he could have seen that, could have audibled there. Yeah, he needed to be in a different play because that one just meshed perfectly for the defense. All the gaps were filled, except for the one the offense really wanted to run through. And that was filled by a big man wanting to make a tackle. And he made a great tackle. And he's got this one down to the 10. Seven yards on the carry. Make it third and four coming up. Well, that's why the guy with the headsets is down there. All right, they know what they're doing because they got stuffed on a running play on first down. 
And I think myself and probably the fans were saying throw the football in this situation. But he knew what he was doing, called another run, and now they've got third and short. It's been a pretty long opening drive. This will be play number 11 coming up on third down. They'll set up to throw. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And he's able to pick up the first before he's brought down inside the five at the four. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. His passing's been on point on this drive, hasn't it? Been very accurate, gotten the ball downfield, gained nice chunks of yardage. But now, in this situation, the field is really condensed, partner. So if he's going to throw the football, that have to be pinpoint here. I was, was going to ask you about that. Field shrinks, has to be sharper, but it's been a good opening drive so far. Now they just want to see if they can cap it off with the bell ringer and put it in the end zone. Come on, let's go! From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked by Nick Kwiatkowski. Certainly not how they envisioned ending their opening drive here in the first quarter. Too many ones in this play. First quarter, first drive, first interception thrown. And that last one, that hurts. Before the offense gets going again, league-wide story here. You and I got a kick out of Juju Smith-Schuster post-game comments because he had a long touchdown, <laughs> and he said he kept looking over his shoulder because his Madden rating was only an 82 or an 83, thought he was going to get caught. Yeah, you can tell he's a youngster because us old folks, that's when the Satchel Page quote comes in. Don't look back. Someone might be gaining on you. <laughs> but I loved how, I loved the fact that he said, my rating, I, I thought I was faster than that, essentially. <laughs> well, guess what? The ratings get updated each week. Juju, you will be an 89 <laughs> starting next week. And by the way, your actual rating prior to, it was 88. Yeah, you were a little off, but bottom line, don't look back, just fly forward. And it's complete. The tight end, Deion Sims. And he's brought down after a good game. That one goes for 24 yards. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on at its second down. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. Second down now after the incompletion. A first carry now for Jordan Howard. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? All right, here we go. Green, 39. Ah! Off the play fake. Here's Trubisky. And incomplete. A disappointing drop there defensively by the rookie. And now fourth down. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. Here's Pat O'Donnell to punt in his fourth year from Miami. Trevor Davis, deep for Green Bay. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. 
The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. That opening drive ended with the INT. It didn't lead to points, but still not the way they were hoping to begin the game. But how about going and telling your defense, thank you, a huge thank you. You said it didn't lead to points, stalled off that drive. Now they've got a chance to redeem themselves and maybe reward their defense a little bit by putting some points on the board on this one. shake off the interception he'll look to throw a dump underneath the Jones and able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds it'll be a gain of six and that'll make it a second down I know most of the time when the ball's in the air you're thinking wide receiver tight end but running backs they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays so the offense readies for a second and four to throw here looking right sideline but it's incomplete had the right idea there trying to throw it to the sideline but he led him just a little bit too much trying to get it out to his receiver ends up falling to the ground incomplete the Packers on third down a perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going this is third and four He'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they were unsuccessful. Now on to kick it away, the rookie from Miami, Justin Vogel, as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. No, oh, a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle him. 51 yards on the punt there, and the Bears take over. Now the Bears offense ready to take over again. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Begin the drive with Howard. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. A big hitter there, a first down gain of 26 yards. This is a little bit like baseball here. Strong up the middle. Both sides want to be that. In this case, the offense ended up winning the ultimate battle. And those big runs between the tackles, that's a little deflating for a defense, isn't it? It really is because that's where your strength's supposed to be. You're supposed to be in a spot where they can't make that yardage there. You're supposed to send them outside. Not in this case. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Again, it's Howard. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Five yards there. And remember, Howard last year, 5.2 yards per rush. So right around his average. The only Bears running back that's averaged that many yards per carry in a single season, Walter Payton. And if Jordan Howard can keep up that type of pace, the city of Chicago will surely embrace him. Now Trubisky to throw on second. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards.
So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. From the red zone now, here's Trubisky on first down. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Adam Shaheen was the intended target. And now it's second down. But not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Now a carry for the change of pace back. The rookie, Tariq Cohen. And good downhill running. He's got six yards down to the 13. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. It looks like the Packers have added an extra DB on third down. Play action. It's Trubisky. Now the pressure gets there, and he goes down just inside the 20 at the 19. Nick Perry with a big-time sack on third down, and it'll be a loss of seven. And, partner, it's safe to say that the secondary really contributed to that sack. Yeah, nickel set, five defensive backs. They covered everything. Nowhere to go with the football. But my question is, why didn't he throw it away? Connor Barth now for the Bears field goal. From the left hash, this from 37. And Barth puts it through. And it's 3-0. The Bears hit the scoreboard first. So it's a seven-play drive, but it stalls out in the end. Let's credit the defensive front seven. They were a little leaky at the start of the drive, but they stiffened toward the end. Barth now after the made field goal to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Packers offense now heading back out onto the field. And it's been a rocky start for them thus far. They had the turnover and then the punt on those first two drives. So there is optimism because they've improved, right? Turnover, you just noted it punt's on the first better. drive. Punt's better than the turnover. The punt is better on the second one. Now they're hoping to turn it into first downs and hopefully points. here on first down. Let's it go for Nelson. So they took a shot on first down but couldn't connect. They decided to take a shot and right down the middle of the field and really they didn't give it as much time to develop, did they? They want to take that shot somewhere around the 15-yard mark. And the defense able to recover, bat it free. looking to avoid a third and long at second and ten. Here we go. A give to Jones. <laughs> and he's going to get about seven yards on that one up to around the 33. And that was a really nice run there to bring up third and short. After the incompletion on first down, it's awfully nice to have a running back that you can hand it to and put you back in a good situation.
The Packers on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This time it's third and three. They'll try and run for it with Jones. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. We think, Brandon, I like the intensity this defense is showing right here in these first few drives. They're not just holding the line because they're doing their job, but they're doing more than that, aren't they? They're getting a nice push into the offensive backfield. And a great example right there for the loss on the tackle. On now is the Packers punter. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. And now the Bears coming out as they get ready. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. On the gas. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. Looking to throw Trubisky on first down. And this is caught. A spectacular one-handed grab there. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. It's got to the point where we see guys like that make that type of a catch. Not fair goes through my brain. That size, that speed, and now they're acting like wide receivers, too. Uh, yeah, tight end one-handed catches. They're kind of like wide receiver one-handed catches nowadays. Just not right. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. All right, here we go. Ah! They run play action for Howard. Now Trubisky. The catch is made by Kendall Wright. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. So just a lone field goal in this first quarter of play. 3-0 is our score. And we're back to Soldier Field after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis back with you as it's Bears football here to begin quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. midfield and down to the 48 yard line give him three on first down it'll set up a second and seven not much happening there on first down I thought there might have been a hole for a split second yeah but it dried up pretty quickly didn't it closed fast on second down here's Trubisky Complete to right, and he's brought down. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Well, yeah, obviously, red man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Bro? Yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and it curls back inside for the completion. They go play action with Trubisky. It's caught at the 10. A really nice gain of 25 yards. 
I like that about Trubisky. He has some calm in the pocket, some good presence, despite the fact only 13 starts in his college career and an entirely different style of offense. Remember, he played that spread stuff while at North Carolina. to the 14. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. So the myth has been shattered. Every cornerback in the league is not just a cover corner. Some of them will stick their nose in there and make plays exactly as we just saw there. A big loss suffered by the offense after that nice tackle. Second down, Trubisky. That is caught at the seven yard line. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take what you can guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. So third and five, defensively expecting pass. They've got six DBs out there. the gun Trubisky trying for right and it's intercepted picked off by Blake Martinez and a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back Brandon this is why golfers do their best to never count a score in their head before the ball goes in the cup this looked like a slam dunk for points on this drive didn't it instead they throw an interception and they're gonna come away empty And our focus now moves to Jordy Nelson. Looking down at the stats here, realizing he has no catches. They've targeted him twice, but no catches. So how do they get him more involved, Charles? You make sure he touches it on routes that he likes to run. Maybe even run a reverse or some type of a jet sweep so he gets his hands on the ball and get him active and involved in the game. You just try and find ways to get him going, and it doesn't have to be something that's big downfield. Maybe kind of like in basketball, just a shooter seeing the ball go through. You get him a rep. Get him more comfortable. I agree with that totally. Maybe set that solid screen and give him an easy look. Well, to this point, no catches. Let's go! Ryan, oh. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. <laughs> Caught on the right side by Adams. And they'll get him down up past the 15. They needed some breathing room. He gave it to him. 11 yards and a first down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. and catch. This one will go to the 28-yard line. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue.
Throwing, Hundley. Over the middle, complete. That's Adams. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. down carry by Jones and he'll be taken down just shy of midfield a solid run on first down gain of seven leaves him with a second and three but no matter how they phrase it staying on schedule staying ahead of the sticks whatever you want to call it seven yards on first down that fits the bill Someone moved, flag is out, that's going to be five yards. And that'll drive coaches crazy. You work all week on dealing with loud crowds, on dealing with motion, and then you have a guy jump. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. And they still need eight yards for the first here on second down. Now back to throw. His throw incomplete. Randall Cobb, the intended receiver. And that takes us from second to third down. I'll tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, there's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. The Packers on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and eight. Let's go. Five, nine, nine. Five, nine. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. He's going to look deep down the field. A swing pass caught. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, Packers. Jordy Nelson, 56 yards. And the Packers are able to cash in for six. And there, Charles, he lined up out left, ran the post, caught it over the middle, and the rest, as they say, is history. And you have to love the scheme that they just showed there because if you're going to run a deep post, you ordinarily have to get a safety out of the middle of the field. And you do it one of two ways, either by running routes at him that carries him away from it, or you either freeze him in the middle with routes that run underneath so that he doesn't get depth. Then you throw it over the top, and boy, what a successful play that was. So that drives seven plays in length, and the result, a Green Bay score. Crosby on now to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And that's a big collision. He's knocked backward as they will mark him down. And this offense led by Mitchell Trubisky going to make their way back out there. He's likely still kicking himself from the interception last drive that wound up leading to a go-ahead score. And he's going to assume all that came with that one, all right? That's all on him, but he also knows he's got to erase it from his mind and get back out there. This drive, very important.
Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Sims. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. This is Howard on second down. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. They'll try to run for it with Howard. And he gets it to the 34, good enough for the first. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. Throw on first down with Trubisky. Out left to Shaheen. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> and what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Trubisky with a give to Howard, and he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give him a new set of downs. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built, get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. They run. This is Cohen. Finding room inside the 40. There he goes, left side. Touchdown, Chicago. A great play there. 55 yards. And the Bears are in for six. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. Here's Connor Barth for the point after. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. That time, a six-play drive. And the last play, a really nice run that culminated in the touchdown. Barth now to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And a penalty marker's down on the field. And they might be backing up a bit here to start the drive. Return team. 
Now this is going to put them back with a not great field position. So they really got zero benefit at all, right? Sometimes you can absorb a penalty when you get a big return. Then the penalty brings it back, but you still have great field position. As you pointed out, not in this case. throw now on first down he couldn't quite hold it got hit ball pops out incomplete well that will give us a second to discuss some trade news from this last week Jimmy Garoppolo he's headed east to west to San Francisco your thoughts surprised big time surprised because many people thought that San Francisco was going to wait until next year and either draft a quarterback or pick someone up in free agency. Instead, they make the bold move here, getting Garoppolo. And I like it for San Francisco because they could have their quarterback of the future. They could tag him at the end of the year and keep him around for another year while they continue to evaluate. Or he could still be another trade for them down the road as they evaluate quarterbacks coming out of college next year. So, so many different things. But Jimmy Garoppolo looks like he'll get his chance now to be a starting quarterback in the NFL. The Packers on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This will be third and six. They'll set up a throw. Caught left side by Cobb. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. Completion. want to get your thoughts on the game of the week from week eight. I think it had to be Seahawks-Texans, was it not? I don't see how any other game could equal that. Talk about ebb and flow, back and forth, and an amazing quarterback duel with Deshaun Watson, the rookie from Houston, and, of course, Russell Wilson with Seattle. Wilson Seahawks won the game, but Richard Sherman, what he said about Deshaun Watson after the game, I thought that spoke volumes. He said that Watson played the best game any quarterback has played against us. Both quarterbacks over 400 yards, both of them four touchdowns. Two minutes to play here in the first half. We're back to Soldier Field following this short break. A reminder coming up at halftime, Larry Ridley will join us from Orlando with our halftime report, but business to take care of before that. The Packers on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. They'll set up to throw, and this is going to be incomplete. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and then just continued there with that incompletion. And definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. On now is the Packers punter as he's on to kick it away. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. Jordan Howard and the Bears offense making their way back out there. A good job in the passing game, decent job in the running game, but really they've been more effective uh, through the air. We'll see if that shifts at all as this goes on. Thus far, it feels like they're calling this game in reverse. Normally, you run to set up the pass. Here, it feels like they're passing, hoping to set up the run and be more effective later on in the game. Yeah, you can do it both ways. We usually talk about it in the reverse, however. No doubt about it. Now 
Trubisky on first down. Going right side here, and that's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. Ten. It's Trubisky over the middle complete. It's Sims, and he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A good pick up there, a 22. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. Trubisky. The swing pass caught. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. Kendall Wright, 26 yards. And the Bears will add on to their lead. And that'll give them a two-score lead here, but I'm looking ahead. They just want to hold it for the final moments here of the second quarter. They don't want to give up anything on the other side. No, not at all, because if they don't, it almost had the feel of an imposing their will score. And right now, they want to make sure they keep that and carry it into the second half. Now Barth for the extra point. It's good to make it 17-7. The drive there only spanning three plays. And the end result is a Bears touchdown. Barth now to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. Out is Brett Hundley and the rest of the offense as they'll take over here. He's had a solid start to this game, but bottom line is they're losing, so he doesn't care about his stats. He just wants to right the ship on the scoreboard. He wants to actually increase his stats because he feels like if he does, that means things will get better for his team, maybe get him back into the ball game or into the lead. In these situations, I remember playing with a quarterback once where he actually ran out onto the field first ahead of everyone else just to say, guys, let's go. Try and create that energy, create that spark. Well, so far, he has one touchdown, one interception. He'll be looking for that second touchdown now. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. The new acquisition, Martellus Bennett, the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. We'll make a quick transition here. You and I were going over our stat packs from week eight of the NFL. And how about... Two coaches named Sean, two first-year head coaches in the job that they're doing in the National Football League. On opposite coast, no less. Let's start out west. Sean McVay, the former wonderkind with Washington as an offensive coordinator, now running things for Los Angeles Rams, 31 years old, has his team off to a 5-2 and two start and threatening in the NFC West. Then you come back east, now you get a defensive guy, Sean McDermott, who came from the Carolina Panthers. He looks at it with different eyes, yet the same results, 5-2. and two. And how fun is it that at the beginning of the season, these two teams had a big trade. Yeah. Sammy Watkins went from Buffalo to the Rams, <laughs> got E.J. Gaines from the Rams to Buffalo, and both teams are benefiting. Still floors me that McVeigh is 31 years old. Wow. Now on 
first down. He'll drop to throw it. And a quick throw here. That's complete. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. Screen to Jones. Some tough running, but it only gets him to the 45. And on third and inches, we're going to get a whistle and a timeout as they get it right at the 32nd mark of this first half. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. The offense on third down tonight, they've had good success, five for eight to this point. They're looking at third and a few inches. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Neutral zone infraction, defense. Yeah, he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped, but... I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. strike they'll look to throw and his throw is incomplete Martellus Bennett the intended receiver that'll bring up second down the one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half they come after him they've sat back I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing and they certainly have kept them on their toes that's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard to throw here on second and ten and they will not get the connection there it's incomplete oh man for him to be that wide open and drop it sometimes you have just too much time on your hands right you end up thinking way too much and your hands get shaky and yes he's a tight end but that's a catch he should have made The Packers on third down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. This is third and ten. Here go. He'll look to throw. And that will be incomplete with a clock showing 18 seconds now to go. Now is the Packers punter. He'll boot it away from about his 35. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight-yard line.
in not great starting field position here for the offense. Let's go. Blue they go with Howard to begin the drive. And he's taken down, but able to get this up to the 20-yard line. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. So we come upon halftime here at Soldier Field with the Bears out in front. As we'll send you down to Orlando as we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. The Bears are happy to be in front right now and just want to play two more solid quarters. The Packers won't panic either. They know they just need to take it one play at a time. All right, let's roll those moving pictures. Packers opening up on offense. Hundley's under pressure will throw the pick. Kwiatkowski's reading the play and comes away with it, ending the drive. Bears with the ball early in the second. The pass ends up being picked off. Martinez this is the one who makes the pick, halting the offense's drive. Offense out now following the interception. The catch will be made deep down the field, and that's a house call. First and ten, Packers go up by four. He'll break free of the pack, and he'll win the sprint to the end zone. Now first and ten, that puts them up by a field goal. Right, wide open, able to make the grab. And this play will go for six. Bears push the lead to ten. Okay, Larry, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. And now trotting back out with the rest of his offense and makes the big tight end. And we peek at some of his work from this game where he's nearing 100 yards. And haven't we gotten pretty close in this game nowadays in the NFL to almost taking labels off of the tight end position? These guys now can be the number one option in an offense, and that never used to be the case. So now how do you even match up with them? cornerback, safety, linebacker, all three will have deficiencies against the best tight ends in the game. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Let's go! 319! On the handoff, this is Howard. Broke a tackle, but not much room there ultimately. Just up past the 25 and no further. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. From the shotgun is Trubisky. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. It'll be a loss of one. And that's going to make it third down and 10. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. The Bears on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and ten. Here we go now. From the gun, it's Trubisky. 
first shot in there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. But no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. Here's Pat O'Donnell now as he'll punt it away for the second time. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And it'll be Packer football here, first down and 10. So here are the Packers now. They get set for their first possession of half number two. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Throwing here on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Let's switch in topics for a second. You know it was strange watching the Monday night game and seeing Jamal Charles in Kansas City, but not in a Chiefs jersey. And after the game, he was asked about it. He said it felt weird. It looked weird. It was strange all the way around, but what a nice ovation he received from the Kansas City fans when he made an appearance in the game because so classy are they welcoming him back, realizing what he did for their franchise. And they did part amicably, all right? There's a reason why he was gone. But he had a fumble early that Marcus Pierce picked up and ran back for a touchdown. But the best thing for him that night, even though they lost, went over 10,000 yards from scrimmage in his career. Ten active players have done that prior to him, and he still holds the yards per carry average for NFL history. 5.4 yards every time he touches the ball in a running play. Third down, he'll drop to throw. They'll set up the screen to Montgomery. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Holding offense. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. The Packers on third down, five out of nine thus far. This is third and 17. Back to throw. And that is incomplete. And we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. On now is the Packers punter. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Fair catch signaled for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tempt to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Play fake here on first down. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum. Big play right in his hands. Unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. Here we go. Green, 39. 
Second and ten. It's Trubisky again. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Sims. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. The Bears on third down, just one for five to this point. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. A give to Howard. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. Another nice run there by Jordan Howard. And, and when we talk about fresh legs, how about 2016? Jordan Howard, the number two rookie rusher. Heck, the number two rusher in the NFL <laughs> behind another rookie, Ezekiel Elliott. In the first three weeks of the season, he only had 12 carries. So once week four hit, really found his groove. So it'll be first down here after the run. All right, here we go. They go play action here on first down. Going up top. And it drops down incomplete. Thought he might have had it. Instead, second down. I remember a coach telling me a long time ago the difference between playing corner and safety in the NFL. Corner is like the Autobahn. Everybody just flying by, and these corners have been really busy in this game, although they got it done on the last play. On the last play, yes, but there have been some good numbers put up against them offensively. So second and ten here. Give left side to Howard. Uses the spin. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. And the offense lining up first and 10. Now Cohen trying to run inside, but nothing there. No gain on the play there. Second down. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. And on second and ten now. Single, single, single slot, single slot. Now let's go. Blue right. Out of the gun, Trubisky. He's going to dump that off to his running back, Cohen. And he's going to be out of bounds down inside the 20. A solid gain of 15 yards in the sticks move. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Hurry up, here we go. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll take this down for about four yards, down to the 15. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Hey, watch the ball, watch the ball. Trubisky, draw play, gives to Howard. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. 
They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Now this will be the ninth play on this drive. They come out here in the eye. Trying to punch it in with Howard. And he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. When you think of Mike Daniels, you think of strength. Hard to knock off the football, but surprising quickness and ability to move and evade people. How about that play there? Well, he can squat 600 pounds, so that's how he caught people's attention coming into the league, and he caught our attention right there. Oh, long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. Here we go now. Three, 19. Now they'll throw it with Trubisky. Oh, it stays up. And that is caught. Touchdown, Bears. Deion Sims, a five-yard touchdown. And the Bears will extend their lead. Still plenty of time left in the game, but now starting to pull away a little bit. Get some breathing room with that one. And I don't want people to think that NFL locker rooms are cookie cutter, that everyone's saying the exact same thing in every situation. But I do know that all 32 teams have an emphasis on starting fast. Game, being on second half, no matter what, with his first five minutes, first three, whatever, this was a big score to start the second half. Barthon for the extra point. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it culminates in a touchdown for Chicago. Barth now to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. They'll start out on the ground with Jones. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. I think they want to start getting back into this game. It behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. They'll go again to Jones. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. Give him six yards on the carry. It's going to be third and three now. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. The Packers on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for 10. Here it's third and three. Throwing Hundley. And complete on the right side to Bennett. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. 
Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage will be found. Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. to the ground this time Montgomery and he'll be brought down just shy of the 45 that's what they needed it's an eight yard gain and now third and four suddenly doesn't look so bad but you got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation it seemed pretty dire but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run The Packers on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This is third and four. Here we go. Oh, one, 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 one. Now Hundley. It's caught. Nelson. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree. One thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. So here we go, first and 10 now. Let's go, Brand 38. Now back to throw. Free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. So the pass goes awry there, but boy, week eight of the NFL, three passers, they did not have any throws go awry. That was Matthew Stafford, Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson. All three were over 400 yards. Yeah, absolutely scintillating in performances. The only downside for Matthew Stafford, didn't pay off in touchdown passes. He's the only player in NFL history to have two 400-yard two games and no touchdown passes in them. Now, Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson, they rang the bell four times each throwing the football downfield, but what a day. Three guys over 400. A lot of footballs in the air, a lot of excitement for us fans. Yeah, but Watson and Wilson were going head-to-head. -head. Stafford lost, so the 400-yard passers went one and two. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that doesn't sound right, does it? <laughs> it if doesn't. you throw for over 400 yards, you should get a W out of it. Now play number eight on this drive, and they need nine yards to pick up the first on third. They'll look to throw. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. What's the old adage, be quick but don't hurry? Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be getting rid of, otherwise he was going to get sacked. On now is the Packers punter, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. Onto the field now come the Bears. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Hey, hey, right. Watch out in. Here we go now. Blue 90. Blue 90. 
Looking to throw Trubisky on first down. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Nick Perry in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. But well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. Final minute now of the third quarter. with Howard and he'll work his way across the 30 to the 32 now pick up of seven there but they'll still have 12 yards to go on third down and that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut and he's a guy that has some height to him so when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash makes it a lot easier to stay upright see the field and make a run as we just saw there the Bears on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third down and 12. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now at Soldier Field. It's Bears football here. They also have the lead as well as we begin quarter number four. The Bears on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third down and 12. Now they'll run it with Cohen. A little juke. And some space here. Again the juke. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. 25 yards to pick up there and also a first down. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. And now a first down following that long game. Now Howard. <laughs> and he's going to be brought down at about the 33-yard line. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads. Bowled over a few people. Look at that one. Right up the gut. So up through three quarters. No reason to lighten up now. Second down following the run. They go with Howard again. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount. And he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. Fresh set of downs here. A give to Howard running left. And he's got some space here. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. A nice carry there of 15 yards. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. 
And here comes play number six on this drive. From the red zone now, here's Trubisky on first down. And he takes it inside the 10 to the 8 before he's out of bounds. A gain of six there on first. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. This is Cohen. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the nine. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. Now it's Trubisky. And the pressure will get to him. He goes down. Now there is a flag on the play, but this looks like holding on the offense. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. Connor Barth now for the Bears field goal. He hit his first, this one from 40 yards out. Barth puts it through. And that will push this lead up to 20 now. So it's three more points, and that widens things out even further here in the fourth. Hey, in this league, you can never have too much. So if you're in range, grab the three whenever you can. Barth now after the made field goal to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Now trotting out there, the Packers getting ready to go. And you know, their previous possession, they were able to move the football, but still wound up punting in the end. You know, in 2016, Carolina had a 20-play drive mm, yeah. that lasted over 10 minutes. And remember how it ended? In a punt. Yeah, I mean, how does that happen? You just don't see that happen every day. And this one may be not quite that bad, but still, you'd like to have a chance for points if you hold the football that long. Agreed. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Here we go. Let's go. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Caught by Nelson left side. And he's going to be ripped down by the face mask at the end of this. And that's going to add 15 more onto the end of this thing. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Tack on 15 more for the face mask, and that becomes a huge play. Big pass gets caught on you. You're doing everything possible to get him on the ground, and sometimes you end up grabbing the face mask.
After the penalty, it's Jones. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Tough day. Tough sledding right there. And it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And caught. This is Bennett, the tight end. No gain that time on the completion, and it'll be third down. Now the old pass completion for no gain, not something you want to call up out of the playbook too often. Yeah, most offensive coordinators don't have that on their play sheet, so they've got to go back and scramble after this one. But right now, with what they're telling receivers about making sure you take care of the ball in open field, Sometimes the fighting for extra yardage doesn't come as a result. That and good tackling can lead to no yards gained. The Bears have put an extra defender in the secondary on third down. Yep, they're in the nickel. Let's go! Brian 38! Brian 38! Back to throw here. And the third down pass falls incomplete. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. They're already slim. Hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. Here go. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. He's going to take a shot for the end. And this is going to be intercepted. Adrian Amos with a pick. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage, they've all been excellent. And now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. They had the double-digit lead at halftime, and they have continued to roll. They're hard to stop right now. I think what we're seeing is an example of the team that has it figured out in this ball game. And whatever the adjustments are the defense has made, <laughs> hasn't slowed them, him. hasn't phased them at all. They either anticipated them or they've been so far ahead that they just can't catch up. Now it's just a search to add to the lead. couple up to the 22. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who, who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? The old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. Going to give this time to the tailback. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Officially, no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. That's a first down if he holds on, but you saw the contact. Able to jar it free from him and force a fourth down. Great play defensively there, as you said, just to knock it free, because if he had caught that, pass the sticks, first down. Here's Pat O'Donnell now as he's on to punt for Chicago. Call that an even 50 yards on the punt. 
with seven on the return. And possession will switch hands first and ten. Out comes this field general once more, leading his offense back onto the field. And that interception that ended their previous drive likely also ended any shot they had a victory. Yeah, long road back from here, no doubt about that one. But let's face it, if you're going to go out there and compete, you want to try and end on a strong note, don't you? Absolutely. It won't end in a victory, like you said, but they can maybe take something positive out of this one. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. He sets up the screen to Jones. No gain on the screen there at second down. So many screen passes are the result of excellent acting by everyone. But sometimes the guy who's getting the ball tips to play off. <laughs> you know, the running back, because he's, he's eager to get the pass. And sometimes he doesn't act very well about whether he's going to block or leak out or whatever. And I think that they saw that, and that's why they're able to get to him on it. Second and ten. In the middle of the field, he's got Nelson. And he's brought down, but not before getting across midfield to the 45. 23 yards on the play. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. to throw now on first down. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. Offense still needing 10 yards. Second down. They'll set up a throw. It gets it over the middle to Cobb. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. Some think that teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them. And they run that quick cut on the slant. And oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. He'll look to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decided to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. They'll run it with Jones. And boy, is he close. Did he get there? No, they're going to say he's short of the line to gain. Mike McCarthy took the gamble, didn't pay off. And the Bears will get the football back. So they've gone for it twice now on fourth down of this game, and both times unsuccessful. I wish we could hear the headsets now between the head coach and the offensive coordinator. Now that they're 0 for 2. If they get into a third situation, head coach might say, hey, you got anything for this one? <laughs> might get radio silence back. <laughs> the Bears offense now heading back out onto the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense. Get a couple of first downs and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. All right, here we go. They'll begin the drive with Howard. Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. 
Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back at New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. Again, it's Howard. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It's a loss of two, now third down. On this day, the ground has been his, but at least on that individual play, we just saw the defense finally with a win. Yeah, they finally got one, and that's a win for them, but all game long. He's seen the holes, and they've been huge for him. Kind of like a baseball hitter in the zone. The ball seems bigger and he's just whacking it. These guys, they've got it going today. The Bears on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. This is gonna be third and 13. They go play action. Trubisky, and that is incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Here's Pat O'Donnell now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. <laughs> a big kick that time, 52 yards. And the Packer drive will start from deep in their own territory with a first and 10. Jordy Nelson now trotting back out there on offense. Seems like the measuring stick for a receiver for a great game is 100 yards. Well, he's well past that now. And as we analyze how he's getting him, that's where it really becomes fun because, let's face it, they keep sending coverage at him, keep trying to put the pressure on, yet he finds ways downfield and finds openings. That's a really crafty receiver. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And almost intercepted. It would have been his second pick of the game. Instead, it'll be second down. He's got to be kicking himself right there. His team's already picked off two passes. That would have been the third in the game. And boy, they've really played well attacking the football. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. Looking to throw. Over the middle complete. It's Cobb. And he'll be taken down just shy of the 40. That one goes for 24 yards. Slam route's effective no matter who's running the route and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. two-minute warning about to hit, and it looks like they're going to get one more play in. It'll be interesting to see what they try and do on this play. Do they try and take a shot, or do they just try and get to the two-minute warning? Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. So it's Packer football here as we welcome you back. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. So the offense has it first and 10. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. Get there, get 
personal foul. Face mask. Defense. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. like this and you know he's used to dishing out punishment but here he's one that has to absorb the contact and as a result unable to hold on to the football 10 yards still left on second down Here go. they'll set up to throw now a desperation throw deep downfield and they went for a big play through the air on second down. Couldn't connect. Now it's third. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. So a second down incompletion now brings up third down. He'll look to throw. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Sometimes we wonder about play calls, but this one made perfect sense to me. He's got the only touchdown that they've scored in this game. Tried to get it to him again on another deep ball. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. That's brought in by Davis over the middle. And he's going to be taken down, but not before reaching the 15-yard line. Holding offense. That's a good chunk of yardage. It's going to be canceled out. And we always talk about hidden yardage in a game. That's going to count as that because now it doesn't go on the books. But now they have to make that up again, don't they? And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Here we go! Throwing, Hundley. The 20! Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he carries this one all the way down to the nine. The decision to go for it pays off, and now they're set up first and goal. Now whistles here, flag down. I think one of the Packer linemen was moving. That's going to set him back five yards. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. They'll look to throw again. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. And we just saw another example. These cornerbacks have played tight coverage all game long. Might start wanting to think about a few double, triple move routes to try and shake their guys free. They have, you're right, they have had no room to breathe. Here we go! Now Hundley. That is caught by Cobb. And it's a Packer touchdown. Randall Cobb, a 14-yard touchdown. And the Packers make some inroads here on that deficit. 
And that touchdown puts us in a position to have a discussion, doesn't it? Now it'll be a two-score game after the conversion. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt with a two-score game they're going to have to onside kick it. We'll just see if they've got a miracle up their sleeve. And you wonder what onside kicks they're going to use and in what sequence if they hope to have a chance to win this game. And a pause in the action because the booth, they see something that they want to take another peek at to find out if this was a touchdown or not. Now Crosby for the point after. He's got it, and the score's now 27-14. So that drive goes eight plays, and it ends with a Packers touchdown. So two scores down, time definitely not an ally, but here comes the onside kick. And the Bears' hands team able to pounce on it and get the football. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. The Bears offense led by Mitch Trubisky heading back out there. He has really been buoyed here by a strong running attack. They've been great on the ground. And have enjoyed the entire process because oftentimes when you're running the football well, that's much more of a team effort. Everyone has to come together to make it work. Offensive line, wide receivers, the tight ends when they're on the field, maybe an extra running back leading. It is a really nice thing to see, a team type of thing. And guess what? Quarterback, he got out of locker room a whole lot faster after this game. The interviews are going to go to the running back. Yeah, now we hit the home stretch here in the fourth with their lead. And now a timeout coming from the defensive side for the Packers. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Here we go now. Green 39. Green 39. And he'll give it here to his running back. And a short game down to about the 33. And Alec Packer's going to take another timeout. That'll leave him with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. The offense on third down tonight, they're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. And play is stopped here. Timeout 
It's the defense calling the timeout here. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. Just around the corner, they go down to a knee. Down to a knee one more time, and that should just about do it. Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game. But these two teams, they had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop. Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Are I, you one of those guys I'm a little skeptical, skeptical about it, or did you skeptical. trust it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay, let's trust. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad you took my advice. Got your notes laminated, because, you know, open air boom. That rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive is it that you travel with a laminator? I didn't even know there was a portable laminator. The things that you learn. Golly, wise beyond his years. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Bears get the win at home as we say so long from Soldier Field.